Cheetahs are bad, and we need a new map. Two things you probably heard a fair bit of a few months ago. Well, we got a new map, and we also got an anti-cheat, yet Warzone Pacific is off to a really shaky start. I'll give my thoughts on the map later, but the anti-cheat's getting mixed reviews. There is proof that it's working, but some say it's gotten progressively worse. I can only talk to my experience. In the 230 matches I've played, I've died almost 500 times. How many deaths from cheaters? Only two, both to the same one in the same game. The biggest problem from Verdansk has essentially been a non-issue for me. And yet, season one of Warzone Pacific is by far and away the worst season I've ever played. Let me show you why. For starters, the FOV slider. Despite every single one of Raven's tweets for the past year being flooded with plays complaining about it, and despite Vanguard having one, and despite there literally being an item in the game which drastically increases FOV, to no detriment to performance, we still don't have an FOV slider on console. Nonetheless, as someone that plays on PS5, the lack of an FOV slider is, right now, the least of my worries. For those that don't know, let me show you how the game actually looks on console. When landing in, these white arrows appear, and every time you pull your parachute, your game freezes for a split second. You also can't see your hands or parachute, so it's hard to judge where you are in the air. This, in combination with the freezing, means you will often fall short of where you're intending to land. Once you do land, you'd want to hope these white arrows are gone, because if not, you'll be glitching all over the place. You also wouldn't be at fault for thinking you're playing a PS2 game, because buildings look like this, and because so many things aren't rendered, there are spots where you can see through the entire map. It's no better on the inside of buildings, because it takes a while for everything to load in. It's all there physically, you just can't see it, so you're constantly getting stuck. In the worst case, you'll be shooting directly at an enemy but the bullets aren't hitting. It's because you're actually shooting at an object that hasn't yet appeared on your screen. And did you notice what gun I was using here? Probably not, because you couldn't see it. In fact, you cannot pick up a ground lit weapon without it being totally invisible. When you ADS, your screen will zoom into the appropriate level of your scope, but you don't have a crosshair. Snipers, for instance, look like this. Enemy UAV. And this isn't for some insignificant amount of time either. Here's an example where it took almost 4 minutes before I could see my gun for the first time. Also, pretty much every gun on the floor changes once you pick it up. MP40s are rarely MP40s. STGs are anything but STGs. And since you can't see the weapon you're carrying, you'll often start shooting only to realize you're using a different gun. And for those wondering, the Gulag experience closely mirrors everything I've mentioned thus far. When you first spawn in, you can see through the floor because it's not there. And if you get a fight quick enough, you're actually given an advantage because you can see through the walls. Or, put better, it would be an advantage if you could see your gun. Which, to be fair, does happen once every 15 or 20 Gulags. Now this all looks really bad. It is. But everything I've just mentioned is fixable by changing some settings. If you disable on-demand texture streaming, and if you disable 120 FPS, that'll fix everything I've mentioned thus far, at least on PS5. You can land in with a functioning parachute, buildings look like they should, furniture is visible, and you can see your gun. However, this solution brought its own problems. Even though I restricted my FPS to 60, which isn't an easy transition after playing on 120 for a while, I was now getting lots of frame drops. It frequently felt like I was playing at 30 or 40 FPS, but that wasn't the biggest problem. Every few games, the entire game would just freeze. Sometimes it would unfreeze after 20 or 30 seconds, but most of the time, it would be frozen indefinitely, and you would have to force quit the game. And so that's the trade-off. You can choose to have textures that don't load, invisible ground loot weapons, and parachutes that don't function properly, among many other things, or you can choose to cut your FPS in half and have game-ending freezes every two or three matches. None of these were good options but the former was better. I could at least play out a game. And so that's how I've played the entire first season of Warzone Pacific. Five weeks after launch, Raven released their first patch for console. As of now, the patches have done almost nothing. The guns seem to load a little quicker, but everything else is the same. And I think the textures are even worse. You could probably make a 15 minute video documenting all the bugs in this game, but I'm going to keep it short and just talk about some prominent ones. Starting with, of course, the invisible skin. If someone was using this skin, and if they were more than 35 meters away, you could only see their head. Their entire body was invisible. The worst part, 
even when they weren't invisible, there was a good chance anyone running this skin was also running akimbo double barrel shotguns and stun grenades. My problem was not that this existed. Any new game is bound to have bugs, but patching this out should have taken, what, a day? It took more than three weeks, and then a few days later, there were two more. Buy stations also freeze now. Sometimes they freeze as you're opening it, and sometimes they freeze once you're already in it. In the latter case, even once it unfreezes and you buy the item, it doesn't work. You have to re-enter the buy station and buy it again. It can take 10 seconds just to buy a single item. If someone's sitting in a bush next to a buy, and you use that buy, you're normally dead anyway. Now that they freeze, it's just a certainty. There's also a lot of players freezing while picking up loadouts. This one hasn't happened to me, but I'd imagine it is just as annoying, if not more so, than the buy station one. There's also a fair few audio bugs in this game. One that I kept getting was, once my HP gets very low, my in-game audio becomes muffled. It kinda sounds like your character's ears are blocked. And when this happens, it lasts for the rest of the game. Finally, and most annoyingly, the weapon texture glitch is back. A glitch so bad it covers your entire screen. This has been in Gorn, what, five times in Medansk? I would have thought that after the fifth time you fix the same problem, you probably know how to very quickly fix it the sixth time. Not the case here, because I'm still getting this bug as of the making of this video, more than six weeks after launch. This section is very easy. The new ground based vehicles in this game suck. They're obnoxiously loud. They get stuck on everything. And they're incredibly slow. As such, they barely make moving around the map any easier. And since guns with 10 attachments still have very little recoil, it's very easy to shoot people out of them. They're pretty much useless. Planes, on the other hand, are the most overpowered thing that's ever been in Warzone. Someone decided to give them a gun with infinite ammo that automatically locks onto targets, which are all highlighted on your screen. What this means is that players can get 15 kills in the first minute by shooting people floating in. Players have gotten around 50 kills in a single match just using a plane. From the perspective of someone on the ground, there is very little counterplay. You can shoot them down with your gun, but it might take a while assuming you don't die in the process. You will need to hit around 110 bullets with the current day STG. You can shoot them down with these anti-aircraft vehicles, but good luck finding someone that wants to drive one of these things around. What's worse, there's no way to react once you get shot or even anticipate one coming. Here's a clip where I never heard the plane. If they survive, they'll rejoin. Listening back a couple of times, the sound of the engine is there, but it's very slight. If they survive, they'll rejoin. It's probably not something you'll notice in game. As such, unless you're looking up in the sky, there's a good chance you won't know a plane's even coming before you're already dead. With all that said, it's not surprising what a lot of players are doing. They get in a plane, and they stay in it for as long as they possibly can. You can see this for yourself. Next time you get killed by one, spectate the pilot until they jump out. You might be watching them fly up and down for 15 minutes. The solution here is really easy. Just take the guns off the planes. Helicopters never allow the pilot to shoot people, and they've worked perfectly. The planes don't need guns. Of course, if you play on console, your experience with planes might not be so smooth. On PS5, Every time I start flying, these red boxes appear. The audio cuts out and the entire screen zooms in. Any movement in this state will send your plane off screen as though you're no longer controlling it. I don't think the controls change during this state, but that's what it feels like. Also, the Vedansk vehicles, which always worked perfectly before Caldera, are now a little broken on console. For example, when flying a Halley, you sometimes get the same red boxes. And when this happens, you get this never before seen front on view. Note the timer running smoothly. There was no lag here, it's just another part of the console experience. What about the overpowered guns? Look, I've played this game for two years. I've seen a lot worse than what we've gotten this season. Regardless, as much as I'd love to see people viably using 10 different weapons, it's just never going to happen. As for the gunsmith, I find the decision to double the number of attachments a little strange. I don't see who it benefits. From Raven's perspective, wouldn't 2xing the number of attachments just make it harder to balance the weapons? And from a player's perspective, or at least my perspective, it's just more time consuming. It takes longer to make classes. I do like the permanent slot for fully loaded, 
that's pretty cool. But for everything else, what's really the difference between a muzzle that helps with recoil control and a grip that helps with recoil control? Now I wouldn't have even mentioned the attachment increase if you could create mods for Vanguard weapons. With Modern Warfare and Cold War weapons, after you choose your attachments and camo and reticle, you can save the build. If you want to put this weapon on a different class, click on the gun, click on its armory, and choose your build. It's very quick. Since you can't do this with Vanguard weapons, every time you make a new class, you have to rebuild your weapon from the start. And with 10 attachments, it just takes that little bit longer. And what about the loadout drops themselves? Let's start with the subtle change of the free loadout spawn time. Loadouts spawn close to you but always inside the white circle. On Bedansk, they would drop at the end of the first zone, meaning you were always close to the circle because the gas pushed you in. And so loadouts always landed within 100 or so meters of your squad, assuming your teammates were close by. On Caldera, it's different. They drop at the start of the second zone. Since the circle shifts in, it means anyone at the edge of the zone has to travel further to get the free loadout. If you're unlucky and the zone pulls very far away, you might have a 7 or 800 meter journey ahead. I don't know why they did this, but it's a horribly unnecessary change. Also, in the regular BR mode, they removed the second free loadout altogether. Does anyone know why? I can't think of a good reason. The bigger change to loadouts was removing the ability to purchase one prior to the first free loadout drop. On Verdansk, if you were lucky with the loot, you could have a loadout within a minute or two, certainly within three minutes pretty much every game. Now, since it takes almost seven minutes for the first free loadout to drop, that's the minimum amount of time before you can get a loadout. In other words, someone sat down and said, let's take the best thing about our game, and instead of allowing players to continue to have it within two or three minutes, let's make everyone wait seven minutes. That'll be well received. There's some things to like about the new map. For one, you can now mantle some rocks. Don't get me wrong, it has a really, really long way to go. But there are spots you can climb where there is not a chance you would have been able to in Verdansk. Caldera is also more vibrant and colourful. The interiors of buildings are far more detailed with far better lighting. And we've even got water. More importantly, each POI feels totally unique, which wasn't the case on Verdansk since you were always fighting in recycled buildings. So I think they did a good job designing each area. However, if you were given each POI individually and asked to stitch them together on a map, I think you would have a tough time making a map that plays worse than Caldera. They placed almost all of the POIs at the edge of the map, and they place Peak, by far and away Caldera's highest point, in the middle. This results in a few things. These great POIs I mentioned, you don't spend much time in them. It's just how the zones work. They're perfect circles. Even if the zone pulls to the edge, most of it's still going to be in the middle for most of the game. And what's in the middle? Not that much. Lots of trees, lots of hills, lots of empty space. You know, places that aren't as fun to fight at. There's really only one good thing about placing POIs at the edge. If the final zone does happen to pull there, you'll be fighting in an interesting area. This wasn't the case on Bedansk. There were a lot of crappy end zones like the ones behind prison. Placing peak in the middle is the bigger problem. It's the peak, so anytime you want to go anywhere near the middle of the map, you're running uphill. You're fighting uphill. You're getting held by players uphill. Does anyone actually enjoy these things? I don't have a unique solution here. I agree with what I've already heard a hundred times. They should have placed Peak very close to the edge of the map, added additional POIs in the middle, and cut down some trees. That would have been amazing. More POIs in the middle would have meant more time spent fighting at cool locations throughout the game, and far fewer of these tree-to-tree -tree fights. And for the ones that remain, the visibility would be better with less foliage. Lastly, if Peak was at the end of the map, the constant uphill downhill gameplay would be mostly gone, and Peak would have provided the most enticing reason ever to land at the edge of the map, because you could so easily parachute back to the middle. This would spread plays out, and you wouldn't have half the lobby landing at one of two locations. Bedansk was an amazing map, but I think Caldera might have been even better had it been designed like this. I was originally planning on making this video as a retrospective on what went wrong in Season 1. This is because these videos take a while, and I assume most of the issues would be fixed by the time I could finish. But there was no need. More than 6 weeks later, and the game is pretty much just as bad as it was on Day 1. Luckily, before the delayed release of Season 2, there are some really easy changes to be made. Take the guns off the planes, and Vanguard Royal is suddenly playable. Fix a bug you've already fixed 5 times. Let everyone save weapon mods so it doesn't take 5 minutes to make a class. 
change back the free loadout spawn time and allow players to purchase loadouts. This one alone makes the game at least 50% better. And here's one I didn't mention. Consider the fact that nobody likes dying by accidentally picking up gas canisters. In fact, maybe re-examine the whole gas canister thing altogether. I'm not sure they'll have time to fix all the console problems, but aside from an FOV slider, the console experience was okay on Verdansk. Surely they can replicate it on Caldera soon enough. On a positive note, there were some much welcomed additions at launch, and I still think Warzone Pacific, maybe a little ways down the road, has potential to be a really good BR. But if the current track record of taking three weeks to patch an invisible skin is anything to go by, it'll never come close.